Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News for this Monday, October 10. A special welcome if you're watching on onespotmedia.com. After almost three weeks of closure due to air quality issues, the Criminal Records Office was reopened this morning for business. Scores of people turned up at the location on Orange Street in downtown Kingston. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime Fitz Bailey gave an update to TUJ News. The process, albeit it will take a while to get back to full operation, but we are doing it on a phase basis. The next day service will not be accommodated. At this time, we'll be working on, we'll be accommodating five days and 21 days service. And over time, we will ensure that the process gets back to uh, its normal. Chairman of the Police Federation, Patre Rose, says his members are working, but they are not fully comfortable. Our staff started operations this morning, but that was preceded by our entrance to interact with the staff pretty early to ensure that the, the environment was conducive to operation. We are of the view that significant work was done. Um, we are not entirely pleased because we believe there is a few more areas that needs to be addressed, such as um, the central air system. But we believe that it is important to balance the imperative between the service we provide to the public and the conditions of work for our members. The Education Ministry is in a rush to address a shortage of furniture in schools across the island. More than a month after the new academic year, the Jamaica Teachers Association is bringing the issue to national attention. New academic year, same old story. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Owen Speed, says furniture is limited in almost 50 of the schools he visited. I think today they should be ordering a team to go out into the system to do an audit of the furniture in schools and to ensure that whatever the shortages are, that they fill the gaps and ensure that the children have adequate seating. Because one of the things that I remember in the 80s was that many of the fights that took place in school at that time, they were about the seating, and we can't go back to that kind of situation. And it's not only furniture that are in short supply textbooks issued by the government as well. I've gone to a particular high school and for the math textbooks for CSEC, they asked for 77, I think, and they only have 17 at their disposal to use. That is something that we cannot afford. Grossly. It's grossly inadequate, uh, Mr. Nash, and we have to look at how best the ministry is going to address this situation. In responding to the issues, Minister with Responsibility for Education, Carl Samuda, says the ministry has received a status report on furniture and textbooks. The last report we got suggested that the furniture was either in the process of being repaired, all that was required, and that books were being distributed and have been distributed, but not all books beyond the first term is distributed in the first term. So that towards the end of the first term, then the second term books will be distributed. I mean, I must tell you, quite frankly, that the ministry is working very hard, and I must commend those who are responsible for it. They are working extremely hard to ensure that the children, and up to the last meeting last week, I emphasized the importance of not having a single child share three across the, the desk in any school in Jamaica. I've come into a ministry, right, that had deficiencies. I'm putting it together now, and I have no doubt that if Mr. Speed and his team are prepared to work along with us, as I have indicated, then I'm sure that we will get this job done as quickly as possible. The East Kingston police say misinformation might have led to the recent flare-up of violence in a section of Mountain View in St. Andrew, which left a man dead. Allegations that stolen building material from a construction site reportedly triggered the feud between Jakes Road and Goodridge Lane. Superintendent Victor Hamilton says it has now been discovered that the building supplies were not stolen. The plywoods were not, in fact, stolen, but because of the weather and the, the growth of vegetation resting in an area, you know what I mean? So, as reported to me, I must say, I must say, as reported to me, that the plywoods were not, in fact, stolen, but was 
some place on the site. And because of the rain, as reported to me, there was overgrowth until the plywoods were hidden. The security forces were deployed to Jake's Road and Goodridge Lane Friday morning in response to the feud. A meeting is to be held regarding the resumption of work at the construction site. We have to meet with the, the contractors and the persons who are, who are dealing with the construction to give them that kind of confidence that, yes, indeed, they could go ahead. Where the citizens are concerned, you, you know, it's touchy. It's, it's really kind of touchy at this time. But we hope, we hope, and I'm sure the citizens are anxious for the project to continue whereby they could earn a living and, you know what I mean, they could go about their business of working without the fear of another outbreak of violence. We're trying very, very hard under trying circumstances to bring peace to the situation in Mountain View. Four persons were shot, one fatally, in Barrytown, St. James last night. The deceased has been identified as 33-year-old Andre Hall, otherwise called Beanie, a fisherman of Flanker in the parish. The incident reportedly took place sometime after 11 o'clock. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has promised to allocate more funds to infrastructure now that the government has more money to spend. Jamaica has more fiscal space since the completion of the program with the International Monetary Fund IMF. Mr. Holness was speaking recently at Penwood High in St. Andrew. Having engaged in a program of fiscal management, we will now complement that with a routine maintenance program to ensure that we are not taken by surprise, unprepared when infrastructure suddenly fails. Um, the truth is that these water mains should have been replaced 20 years ago because 50 years or so would have been the useful life of the pipes that are already underground. Three Caribbean islands have been hit by a 4.1 magnitude earthquake. St. Lucia, Dominica and Martinique were impacted about 6.23 this morning. The Trinidad-based Seismic Research Center of the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies says there are no reports of injuries or damage. Despite numerous calls for heads to roll in the case involving former Education Minister Roel Reed, the Director of Public Prosecutions says there is insufficient evidence to charge him. TVJ's Shane Masters reports. Following the sacking of Ruel Reed from his substantive role as Education Minister in March this year, there have been numerous calls for him to be charged for alleged dealings within his portfolio. Chief among them, the Caribbean Maritime University CMU, which has been under the microscope of the opposition and several parliamentary committees. Just a few days ago, the former opposition spokesman on education, Ronald Thwaites, had questioned why Mr. Reed was not charged. Our news team caught up with DPP Paula Llewellyn recently to get an update on the matter. Why wasn't a directive given from the DPP's office to charge Mr. Reed following the review of documents which were provided by the Financial Investigation Division, FID? Those documents, Ms. Llewellyn said in July, revealed possible administrative breaches and conduct which may have contravened four criminal statutes. Additionally, she said there may be administrative breaches that may have contravened possibly two common law offences. But in relation to a charge now against Mr. Reed, At my office, we have objective protocols and ethical protocols that we have to deal with. Unlike other professions, and I'm not going to say in journalism, we cannot run with it. You can only recommend the charging, and that is a deprivation of the liberty of the subject. If when you look at the material that has been presented by the investigators, you see where the material covers ingredients of a chargeable offense. She says the decision of charging Mr. Reed has to go above who he is, adding that there has to be substantial evidence. We in Jamaica, we are not a banana republic. It's only if you're in a banana republic that because you don't like a particular person, then you, are, you can just say, oh, throw them into jail or uh, behead them. We are a country that is governed by rule of law. O'Shane Masters, TVJ News.
One medical practitioner is concerned that the prevalence of breast cancer in Jamaica may be worse than initially thought. Dr. Lindbergh Simpson addressed the matter at Sunday Symposium hosted by the Breast Cancer Society of Jamaica. He is calling for an aggressive public education and screening program similar to what exists for cervical cancer. Dr. Simpson said cases of cervical cancer have reduced. Incidences, you know, probably more than we had thought. 974 women were diagnosed and 413 women died from breast cancer last year. Every day, at least one woman died from breast cancer. So that is pretty striking for us. At KPH, we're seeing as the incidence is rising, most of our operating lists, you know, we do two or three patients every week, sometimes more, who have breast cancer who need surgery. And we see a lot of the aggressive forms of the disease. In regional news, Premier of Monsterrat Donaldson Romeo has announced that fresh general elections in that country will be held on November 18. Premier Romeo said he has met with Acting Governor Mrs. Lindell Simpson to inform her of his decision and to officially dissolve Parliament. He is expected to lead his ruling People's Democratic Movement into the election where it will face a challenge from the Montserrat United Labour Party, the Movement for Change and Prosperity, Montserrat National Congress, as well as a number of independent candidates. The Legislative Assembly has 11 members, nine of which are elected. The other two seats are taken by the Attorney General and Financial Secretary. The British Overseas Territory is a single nine-member constituency with voters able to vote for up to nine candidates. And in sports, Jamaica's Commonwealth gold medalist Aisha Paul Lair has been named to the IAAF Athletes Commission. The athlete who ran in the women's 1500 meters got 438 votes at the elections, enough to be a part of the six selected for the commission. The Athletes Commission acts as a liaison between athletes and the world governing body, ensuring that they participate in the decision-making process under reforms approved in December 2016. Paul Lair joins the likes of Donald Quarry, Grace Jackson and Michael Freiter as Jamaicans who have served on the commission. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Do remember to join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon. <laughs>